welcome to another episode of the Mojo Hour Show. My name is Pamela Sullivan, your host, and I welcome you to a place where we are spiraling up our energy and our mojo, especially for those women who are in the second half of their life and they are excited to put together a journey and a vision that they can execute beautifully for those around them. So again, welcome to another Saturday with me. And today is an exciting one. I know you came because of that title, right? How to Get Your Sexy Rack. You know, it's a very illuminating title and it really gets to one's imagination because it's not usually something we consider and talk about. And the question begs to be answered, why? You know, we we are always so busy doing something in our lives and it has nothing to do with us, especially us women. We have so many things on our plate that are continually demanding our attention. And by the end of the day, the end of the week, month, year, decade, we find ourselves totally burnt out, totally lacking inspiration, and we're just dragging through and wondering what happened to us? What happened to that vibrant, fun, engaging girl and woman you used to know? And I know many women ask this question, especially when we get into conversation about certain things, because we want to know what happened to our mojo. And this is why I am called a mojo maker, because I can help answer that question. Now, not everybody cares about such things, and they might even think it frivolous to be talking about getting one sexy back. But it's not in the the, the vein in which you might imagine it, it is. You know, I'm not talking about becoming a sex kitten or a sex toy, unless, of course, that's your aim. That's not what I'm getting at here. Getting your sexy back is finding the vibrancy to continue creating and living a life that you desire. How is it that you're to go through your days just totally bogged down in frustration and stress, especially in the world in which we find ourselves living these days where there's just so much coming at us. If it's not one problem after another, we're being bombarded with the news of the day and it's just stress, 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 pulling us down into a place where all we want to do is find a safe harbor and make it to the next day the best that we possibly can. And then we go somewhere where we're out and about somewhere and we see a woman drift by us and she has that vibrant and she has that energy. She has that certain something about her, this ineffable quality that we can't quite put our finger on, but we know she has it. She has that joie de vivre if you want. But, and we and we say to ourselves, you know, if I only was more like that, and you can be like that, how you see her float by you in that energy is something that I'm quite certain she's worked at. And I can speak about this because I was that woman. I was that woman that found herself bogged down after a life that was felt quite incredibly burdensome to me. You know, I just ended a primary relationship. I moved across the country. Just, you know, then my mom died and and everything was just falling down and on me. And I thought, well, is this really as good as it gets? There has to be something more. But what can it possibly be? And I had to sit down and figure this out with the help of some good friends, mind you. But the question was answered. I had to find myself in a way that meant that I wanted to experience some fun and some sensuality in my life right? And this is not about going into something, you know, dark and sinister or anything like that. I'm talking about how to build yourself up to a place that you're just proud of, and you just can't wait to get out there and and engage with the world and engage, more importantly, with yourself in a new and vibrant way. So today, I want to share at least seven ways that we can begin to do that. Now, I'm only sharing seven because we only have 30 minutes in this particular part of the show, but stay tuned for the second half of the show if you are with me live. If you're finding this after today, I hope to meet you one day in a live session. So today we're going to start off with these seven ways in which you can bring back your sexy. Okay, so let's start off with number one. Work your core. Now, what do I mean by your core? It's that it's it's that space under underneath your breast. And it's it it's a, a series of where you're your rib cages and, and the muscles um, hold up your spine and your back and pulls you up. And let's not even talk about the, the physical aspects of this. Having a strong core helps you engage with life. This is where all of your feelings of um, fright and excitement reside, isn't it? When you feel something, it comes rushing through your core area. So your core is a place that you really want to master. And how do you do that? Well, exercise, of course. 
I do weight training to help me build my core. And when you get that core engaged through a series of exercises and weight training, you feel like you're on top of the world. You stand straighter and you stand taller and you're able to breathe better. Healthy eating and, and lots of good water also help with that center and your core. And when you finally get that core under control and it's flattened down and you can feel the muscles at work there, you feel like a million dollars and you look like a million dollars in your clothes. You've gotten rid of that muffin top. Ladies, you know how we struggle with that muffin top. And if you are of a certain age, you're fighting metal belly, they call it, where you've got that little pot belly that won't seem to go away. But you, it can go away, but you have to take control of this. It has to be an intentional effort on your part to work that out through training and good food and walking and good sleep. All of these things contribute to a strong core. And I hear some women are even engaging in pole dancing. Now my parents work too hard to keep me off the pole, to get back, try and get on the pole. But I mean, please, if that's your fancy, try pole dancing. It's really great to engage the core, okay? So do what you have to do. You know, check out uh, with your doctor if you are able to engage in any exercises or any, like, anything like that so you're not going to hurt yourself. But there are many gentle floor exercises that you can engage with to get your core in order. And nothing like feeling wonderful when that core is in order. Take it from me. I, I, I've gone from way down here to way up here in my attitude and in my energy because I got that in order. And I can wear dresses like this. I couldn't put this on months ago because my core was not in order. And even, I even if I decided I was gonna wear the dress with my core out of order, I can still do that, many people do. For me personally, it was a choice. So ladies, come on, let's get that core in order. The second thing is, and this is something that my grandmother and my mother taught me as a child. They were quite aware of energy and energy fields that surround us. This, they knew that before it became a mainstream conversation here in the Western world. And my grandmother, anytime she found you out of sorts or something was bothering you or you were somewhat depressive, she got to work. She got out all of um, her herbs and her essential oils, and she would concoct a mixture in a bath for you. And then she'd get, to, get you in there. And I mean, I remember my first, we called it spiritual bath, spiritual blue bath. The first spiritual blue bath I, bath I had, I, I was just, <laughs> I was just freaking out. I've never seen anything like this, but I came to understand its significance. These oils and herbs have a certain frequency about them if you choose the right things and they interact with your energetic field. Now, you don't have to be a believer of these things, but these things truly are at play. It's the reason that we buy perfumes and colognes because they change our frequency and we don't even understand that that's actually what's happening, but it does. When you spray those scents, all of a sudden your olfactory senses pick up. There's a certain new vibe happening. And this is what these spiritual baths were all about, depending on what my grandmother had put together to help you in that moment. And I grew up with that. So at least once a month, I prepare those um, ingredients together because I want to start spiraling up my energy. You hear me speaking about spiraling up. I use things to help my energy grow because this is an important aspect in spiritual work, vibrational work, frequency, all of it. It's all about frequency, just as love is a frequency. So we need to help it along sometimes. And sometimes in our energetic field, things get stuck and we aren't aware of it. So this is something to help you along. I mean, you don't have to engage in such things, but I leave nothing to chance. So I engage in what my female lineage has taught me to work with the energies that surround us unseen, but it's there. All right. So herbal and oils, herbs and oils in a warm bath, the right herbs and oils in the in the in a bath. But you know what? You can just throw some lavender in there and you're way ahead of the game. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. One of my favorite things to do to get my sexy back is grooving to music. Ladies, from an early age, our energy has been stuck in our root and sacral chakras. Now, if you don't understand what I mean by that, I'm talking about the seven body systems, which we call the chakras. And a lot of people seem to think that they are way up here in their chakra system. They're, they're in their throat chakras and they're in their heart chakras and they're in their crown chakras. But if they only knew that they have been stuck in their root and sacral chakras since forever, right? And we don't know how to get out of it. 
a lot of things happen to us. Trauma has happened to us. Sexual abuse has happened to us. All manner of things has happened to us, which has derailed us. And it's stuck in that area of our body. And I recognized this some time ago, and I went and got some help for that through sound. And using sound and dance and music to help me move, move it through that part of your body down here. And I was always a very shy child. And, and anything to do with movement or anything that looked a little, sus, a little bit suspect of sensuality, I backed off. That was that, you know, that good Catholic girl that was always there whispering at me what I shouldn't and should not be up to right so i wouldn't engage in too much of a good time because it it didn't feel right to me based on my upbringing but once it was explained to me about the energy that was blocked in my system and, and i studied um sound and i studied movement and went to work with this my oya energy oh my goodness it was like a flood of energy opened up and with that and i'll talk about that uh, another thing around yoga but further down the page all of these practices help open up those energy centers like you wouldn't believe. Unbelievable. If you are not a believer of these things, fine. But if you at least give it a try, you'll see the difference and you'll understand what the problem has been for you all these years. It's stuck energy. And when these energies start to loosen up, you start to feel things. You start to see things differently. You start to attract things that you weren't able to attract before. A lot of you are asking questions. Well, I can't meet this person. I can't get this done. Nothing seems to be moving. Everything seems to be stuck because you are energetically stuck. You need to understand what has happened in your life and what part of your body that everything is jammed up. Your body is a circulatory system from, the, from coming in from your, from your root crown. I'm sorry, from your crown chakra all the way down to your root. And if there's a jam up somewhere, you can understand the problem. It's not moving. It's like a clogged toilet. So imagine the mess there, the energetic and spiritual mess that is there and things aren't moving right so learn how to clear those systems you need to follow me and i will start teaching these things because people are asking they're wanting to know how to clear the system because a lot of people have noticed that something's different about me yeah i got a rotor reader <laughs> in a matter of speaking i was able to get rid of that jammed up system in my root chakra based on what happened to me as a child it was all stuck there and i was so fearful and frightened of life and my inferiority complex was just starting to um, destroy all my great effort i just couldn't get things to shift and move until i went to work on my root chakra and it's been a wonderful and a beautiful thing ever since so get moving put together a playlist Get some things that have a sort of primal beat to it, some drum beats. Learn to play the drum. Go to drumming classes. Nothing like drums, that earthy beat, that heart beat to help get you moving. Get your hips moving. This is the part of your body that needs to start moving. Dance around in your bare feet. Dance to your favorite music in your favorite outfits, preferably something red, ladies. And you'll start to see the difference when you start feeling the energy of you you start feeling the flow you start accepting yourself you start loving yourself when you are in movement it's a beautiful beautiful thing okay so we'll talk more of that as we move along the next thing is go bold didn't say go bald i said go bold but if going bald is going bold for you well why not but for me what i mean by that is try to do things that are slightly out of your comfort zone. I don't want to push you over the edge and overwhelm you, but when you stretch yourself, again, that helps with the movement of energy within. Try new colors. I'm wearing a tiger print today. Most of you have never seen me in such a thing, right? But it's been hanging in my closet for a very long time. But I wasn't bold enough to put it on. But here I am. How many things in your life are you just letting sit there or go by you because you don't have the courage or the confidence to do it? Whether it's get a new hairstyle or color your hair or cut your hair or whatever the deal is. A lot of women, especially when they get to a certain age, insist on wearing the hairstyle they've had for decades. And all they need to do is freshen things up and all of a sudden, fresh energy lands. People see you differently. They treat you differently. You treat yourself differently when you start doing that right getting older doesn't mean being stuck and this is how you shall be until the end of time i love when i see 
sophisticated, elegant women. And all they did was, you know, get their hair looking healthy and shiny and in shape with precision, with a precision haircut. You don't have to go and buy out a whole department store to get you clothes. Sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, doing something like that for yourself. Why are you walking around with ratty, dry hair? There's no need for that. You don't need a million dollars to do that, by the way. You can even do do-it-yourself um, conditioning treatments at home. Get a professional haircut and then the rest you do yourself. Keep yourself up. This is what we mean by self-care. Care about yourself enough to do the things that you can do with what you have. So a lot of people, the first thing they're going to tell me, oh, I don't have any money. You don't need money for a lot of the self-care. Get on Google and, and do it yourself care, self-care. And you wouldn't believe the plethora of, plethora of information that comes rushing at you, what you can do right now. All right, it's just your willingness and a commitment to keep it up, keep yourself up. Because you yourself, when you see women moving, excuse me, I'm going to have to say it, um, moving through or by you, you can tell the care they have for themselves based on the, the time and energy and commitment and sometimes money that they put on themselves. If you don't invest in yourself with your time, energy and resources, who are you expecting to do that? I take care of me and other people can see that I care about myself enough so they put their trust in me likewise. All right? You don't want me handling your business or handling anything for you if I look like I'm falling apart, right? And that's part of building up my energy too. I don't do what I do um, to, a, to specifically attract an other. I do it for me. And when I look good, I feel damn good. All right. And that's all part of emitting that energy and signal. That's all about getting my sexy back. Okay. So let's move on. Um, get in touch with what makes you feel good. Where are you in your life putting yourself second? Oh, I saved those dishes and towels and sheets for a company. Well, in the last two years, you probably didn't have a lot of company, if any, right? So those things just sat and molded over there while you were waiting for somebody more special than you to arrive. You are special. You are number one in your life. You don't have to wait for me to show up. Sure, you don't give me your best towel when I get there, of course. <laughs> but you are special first before anybody else. You know, in my mother and my grandmother's time, they always had this good stuff waiting for other people to show up to use these things. And I swore when I had my own, the good stuff will be for me. And it has been, right? Whatever I can afford to do for myself, I will do. Not because I'm narcissistic and egocentric, because I deserve that. Why, does, why do I believe that someone deserves it before I deserve it? Where do we ever get this thinking from? And then we wonder why we're so stuck and blocked and our sexy is gone because you are making other people special before you make you special. It's time to, to, to turn that thinking over, ladies. Right? Be the number one love of your life because you are. For most of us, our parents are gone. So we're not going to get that love the way that we used to get it from those people. So the only people left are ourselves. Oh yeah, I have my husband or my special other or whatever the case may be. But you know what? Those people come and go, as some of us well know. And the only person left in that is you. So you always have to be number one in your life because you're the only constant in that life. Because people come and go, and that includes our children. They get married, they go off to university, they go off to start their lives somewhere. And where are you? Right? So this is your time, ladies, to get your sexy back. Make a get your sexy back plan, starting from where you are. What do you need to get done? Hair, your core, your style, your energy. You get, have to get that um, root chakra and sacral chakra spinning again. What, what's the problem? Discover where you need help and get the help. Start working things out. Little baby steps will get you very far, trust me. I started a quest. That's another way to get your sexy back. I started a quest. I, my quest was 11,000, no, 1,000 kilometers. I was going to walk 1,000 kilometers. And you might say, so what, Pamela? Everybody walks thousands of kilometers, right? But I had to do it in a certain time frame, which meant that I had to walk 12 to 14 kilometers a day to make sure I met the goal. And that got me up every day. It got me going. And it gave me a sense of purpose because I was going to meet this goal whether it was raining or whatever was going on outside, right? If someone said, I, can I see, no, after, after my walk, because I had to meet that deadline. And that, while I was walking, I felt like somebody because I noticed that I was putting myself first. 
I was getting to that quest. So four little quests and challenges for yourself as you create getting your sexy back plan, okay? So the next thing is yoga and meditation. I want to talk about yoga a little bit. I'm not a, a yogini per se, but I have been doing yoga over the years and a particular form of yoga, which is Kundalini yoga. And I remember my first Kundalini session. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, it took me like three to four days to calm down from that particular high because you are activating the energy, which is at the base of your spine. And that starts flowing through your body. You want to get your sexy back? get into a couple of sessions of those types of yoga um, routines. I'm telling you, you're, you're waking up, I would call it the snake, and that moves through. And you never forget that feeling. We have what we need, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any gentlemen on this call, we have what we need, but we're always running around seeking. You are everything that you need. The spark of the divine runs through you. Whether you believe it or not, you don't have to believe it, but there it is. And in most people, that spark is dormant. It's your job to do what you have to do to wake it up. You want your sexy back? Wake up the spark. All right. And I also have a, a private group called Spark that talks about a lot of these things as well. Okay. But I, I just want to put your attention on how much responsibility that you have and control you have about getting your sexy back. You don't have to run to the store for most of what I'm talking about, do you? It's a commitment to start taking yourself seriously, to start loving yourself, to get these things done. Why can't you get on your yoga mat and start doing some stretches and be at one with your body and breathe in what you need to breathe in? Why aren't you on the floor on that mat getting some um, core exercises in? Why aren't you getting some good food into you and getting more sleep? and going out and enjoying the fresh air. All under your control. No money needs to be spent, right? All that needs to be spent is time and attention and love. That's it. You want your sexy back? Fall in love with you. I fell in love with me again, and I have to tell you, it's one of the best relationships I've ever had. Who knew? And we, no one talks like that. We're now beginning to talk more and more about that. But the divine that you're looking for is right here, is right here, is right here. There's nowhere to go. All that running around, you're seeking things. The love and the sex that you're looking for is all here. Not me, you. <laughs> this is my sexy. Your sexy is already with you. But you need to be purposeful and mindful about it. So, Because when, when I'm walking down the street, I think that. I feel that. I feel so incredibly good in my body and my skin. It's, it's, sometimes it overtakes me. It leaves me breathless. All right. So yoga and meditation, breathe that energy and let it move through you. It's a beautiful thing. Number seven, revive your style. Oh, this is one of the things that I'm always going on about. Now, I'm not asking you to be a clothes horse or some sort of fashionista. Of course not. But there are so many things, ladies and gentlemen, if you're on here, that you can do to look good for yourself and other people respond. You don't need to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars unless, of course, you want to do that. But it's not expensive to look um, recent. Why are you walking around in baggy big clothes that does, doesn't even show your body? You don't even have to be in shape to look nice in clothes. You know, good quality, updated clothes, not trendy clothes, but stylish clothes. Trends come and go, and most people don't look at the trends anyway right but classic stuff with great accessories it immediately tells you that you're worth it and it, it also emits that signal to other people that you care about how you look so many people right now do not care how they look it doesn't take much to stand out from the crowd all you have to do is comb your hair put on lipstick and put on some nice clothes and boom all of a sudden you separate yourself out from the majority of people because if you look around most people are schlepping about they don't care. They just throw stuff on, baggy. If nothing else, have a non-negotiable for yourself that says, buy, if, especially if you're self-employed or you're at home or, or whatever the deal is, buy a certain time every day, you are in your day clothes. You're out of your pajamas or your sweats or whatever it is. You, you've pulled your look together. You've, you've done your hair. You've put on minimal makeup, if, if that's what the day calls for, and you're ready. Because nothing like clothes and nice clothes to tell you 
that you're ready to take on the day, that you're looking good, and subsequently you feel good. Okay, so I'm going to run through this um, very tiny, sexy list. I have a list of over 50 things to do, but I did, like I said, the time's already gone here about this. So work your core. If you do nothing else, work that core. That's where it starts. Next, take a nice warm bath with herbs or, or oils or both if you can, and just let all of that funky stuff go, okay? Three, group to music. Get a really great um, playlist, whatever your favorite music is, but anything that allows you to move your body, specifically your hips, to get the energy flowing through there. Now, there's more to handling your root chakra than just dancing, but it's a wonderful start. I'm telling you, that's how I got my Oya going. So you want to make sure that you at least start to move and understand how music and sound energy helps um, get rid of all the concrete sitting in that particular place, okay? Go bold. Start looking at some really funky things for yourself. A haircut, a, a nice haircut, good style, good conditioning, good quality, all right? Uh, the next thing, get in touch with um, what makes you feel good. Is it good books, good wine, a good movie, beautiful surroundings, a good bed, a good pillow? What is it, right? Invest in yourself. You don't have to spend tons of money, but do something that says you're worth it. If all you can do is, is, really, is get really great quality um, linen for your beds, do it because that's where you put your sacred self. You wanna feel sexy? Get great sheets. That's a great place to start. Yoga and meditation. Breathe. Feel the energy coursing through you. Feel your body. You are one with your body when you are going through the asanas, especially the kundalini practice. That will get your sexy back. And the last one, revive your style. Stop schlepping. Nothing like clothes to get that feeling, to get that loving feeling <laughs> for yourself. Right? If anybody wants to um, admire how I look or how you look when you go down the street, that's bonus. I do it for me first and do it for you first. By a certain time every day, you're out of your pajamas and you're out of your, your, your sweats and you're not schlepping for the rest of the day. All right, you don't, you don't need to be in, um, watching Netflix looking like, you know, it's the end of the world. You're too important for that. So come on, put it together a plan to get your sexy back. And if you need any more information or help about that, contact me at PamelaSilver.com. And, you know, folks, this is the first step amongst many to help you continue to spiral up. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.